Hello, Sophie here, and it's been a tiny little bit, hasn't it? My days have been so full of 2D art and making commissions for people, and it is so wonderful. And so this is client work, unrelated to this channel, has nothing to do with Blender, and I'm doing all of it in grease pencil because genuinely it is my favorite way to make art. And so I am planning a video about that, why I prefer this vector-based tool and literally could never go back to pixel-based drawing softwares. So if you have any questions about that, what it was like making the transition, please comment them below. So I've already gotten a few questions related to this and one that I will be answering today. So I was asked, is it possible to have an exclusive shortcut-based workflow? Basically, how do you shortcuts to do everything from paint, switch layers, flip your canvas, modify your brush? And so today, I'll be sharing all the modifications I made to my Blender startup file to make the painting process be as effortless and intuitive as possible. So I'll be taking you through the process as if I'm opening up Blender for the first time. And so if you'd like to follow along, and especially if you'd like to try out my changes, without fully committing to them, something that you can do. Shout out to Dante for this trick. So Windows users can type this into your files and then go into your Blender folder. And then I'm currently working in 2.93. And so I can just rename this folder to something like 2.93 my settings. And now when I open up Blender, it'll be like opening it up for the first time but if I ever do want to go back to these previous settings, all I need to do is rename that folder back to 2.93. So I'll just save new settings. And so I'll link below my starter file, which I'll open now. And then if you want to test out having this as your startup file as well, you can go into file, defaults, save startup file. So now this is the file that would open if you go into file, new, and general. If you'd like for this to be the startup file for the 2D animation, file type, and not general, you can do that by going back into the Blender folder we were in at the start of the video, and then 2.93, or whichever version of Blender you're using, and then into this folder. And so this startup.blend is what we just created, and so you would just need to create a new folder, name it 2D animation, and then drag the startup blend file into that folder. Now, if I reopen Blender, the general file type is back to normal. And if we open up a new 2D animation file type, we have my startup. And so you'll already be set up with a lot of modifications just from the starter file, but any shortcut changes, anything you add to your quick favorites, you will need to modify yourself, but then it will be remembered after that. So like when you choose a new 2D animation file, it opens up into the 2D animation workspace, which has your canvas and two properties windows to the right and a timeline at the bottom. I personally don't really leave this workspace, but the question went on to specify being able to toggle a full screen canvas and paint using exclusively shortcuts. And so that would be the 2D full canvas workspace. Speaking of shortcuts, you can use control page up and down to switch between these workspaces at the top. All right, one set of shortcuts down. So the download link will also include a list of the shortcuts I use most often. There will be both a list of the original shortcuts and a list of my modified shortcuts. Since I draw with my right hand holding my stylus, I want to be able to access all of these shortcuts solely with my left hand on the keyboard. And so the modifications I've made are all to move any shortcuts that were not within reach of this hand. The first, and my favorite, is the tab for Pi menu. And so you can go into edit, preferences, key map, and then check tab for Pi menu. Now when you tab, it brings up this beautiful menu and you can just drag to switch between the different modes, Control-Z and Control-Shift-Z, 
to undo and redo an artist's must have, of course. T brings up this toolbar menu to the left. N brings up this menu to the right. And so I mainly use this for the tool window because this allows me to change brushes as well as to use vertex colors when I have vertex paint mode active. F resizes your brush and shift F changes the opacity of your brush. And then I like to use B a lot in the early stages of my work when I may be really quickly sketching out ideas. And so if you press B, you can drag to delete everything within that box. The default shortcut to change layers is Y. And so whichever layer is active is the layer that you'll be drawing in. So Y, I felt, was too far for my hand to reach. And so you can change keyboard shortcuts by going into Edit, Preferences, Key Map, and then I'll drag to make the window bigger. And then in the search bar up here, I can search for change active layer. You do need to change the shortcut for each of Grease Pencil's different modes. And so I can just type in and change them all from Y to W. And then the default shortcut to change your active material, the material that you're currently drawing with, is U. But once again, way too far away. The only mode in which we can actually use this shortcut is draw mode or paint mode. And so I use the shortcut A. And so in edit mode, the shortcut A selects all. And then with the shortcut one, this activates this mode up here where you can see individual vertices. And with the shortcut two, this mode, you see the strokes as a whole. You can use the shortcut S to resize strokes, R to rotate, and G to move it. And then for all of these shortcuts, X, Y, and Z allow you to target specific axes. And so seeing the underlying geometry is incredibly necessary to be able to select specific strokes in order to modify them. Huge part of my workflow, incredibly helpful. But the geometry makes it very hard to get an accurate sense of what your drawing looks like. And so I can make this geometry visible or invisible with this button up here, the show overlays. And so to turn this into a shortcut, all you need to do is right click over it. And down here we have assign shortcut. And I made it D, um, never used it for anything, thought it was a safe bet. And this is a shortcut that will also work in all of the modes. So some other handy shortcuts include Shift D to duplicate your selection. We have X to delete your selection. And M moves your selection to a different layer. So then there's also the shortcut O to turn on and off proportional editing. You can see as I scale, move, rotate, how it affects the strokes around the selection as well, based on the size of this circle. And so the page up, page down keys, increase and decrease the effect of the proportional editing. And so I would recommend changing the proportional editing shortcut to E by right clicking, assign shortcut, and I've made it E. And then you do just need to go into your preferences search for extrude, and then just click on the X to remove the extrude stroke points shortcut. Never really used extruding with grease pencil. We also talked about the shortcut M to move a selection to another layer. I would change it to C, which is the circle select tool because I have never used it. I don't like it. We seem to only have move to layer in edit mode and I will make it C. And then we can use H to hide the active layer, Alt H to show all layers and Shift H to hide everything but the active layer. Something else to note, in edit mode, F does something very different than it does in draw mode and very handy. And what's pretty interesting about fill materials is that the shape automatically fills in itself. I only drew this line right here and then it was filled in automatically. And so typically I don't worry too much about closing in shapes when I'm drawing using the fill tool. But if I want to go into sculpt mode, as I often do, 
and modify the stroke with all of these different tools. I can modify only the parts of the stroke that actually have geometry. This straight line closing the fill can only remain a straight line. And so what F does in edit mode is it closes the selected strokes. And so now I'll go back into stroke select mode and I do need to select it again after I close it. And now if I go back into sculpt mode, I can modify it to my heart's content till shape loses all meaning. And so speaking of F, in sculpt mode, it does the same thing as it does in draw mode. It resizes the tool you're using and shift F the strength. So these are the shortcuts I use most regularly. But keep in mind that you can set a shortcut for many, many things within Blender, either within the key map preferences or like we did with the overlays, just by right clicking on different things within Blender. Not that. Not that. And seeing if it lets you assign a shortcut to them. But unless it's something that you use very regularly, like me and these overlays, I would recommend just adding things to your quick favorites. And so quick favorites is a menu that gets called up with the shortcut Q. These will be different for every grease pencil mode. And when you right click over something like the draw tool in draw mode, there's often an option to add it to your quick favorites. So here is all of the things that I have added to my quick favorites. The draw tool was absolutely the first one. I also added the eyedropper. And one thing to note about the eyedropper, in the default new 2D animation startup file, it's set to material. I've never actually used it. What is it doing? I don't like that. What is happening? Suffice to say, I've never used it. And so I just made it for my starter file um, be selecting the palette by default. <laughs> and so what this does is when you select in your piece, you can see the colors pop up at the bottom of my color palette. Another one I added is the box tool. Ta-da! Then my edit mode quick favorites. If I right click within a range, we have four different options. And so how grease pencil strokes are layered on top of one another has to do with the order in which they're drawn. But sometimes I want to modify the layering. And so the main way I do that is by selecting strokes and sending them either to the front or to the back. There is also bring forward and send backward, which just moves them forward one stroke at a time. I have too many strokes for that to be useful for me, but being able to draw a stroke and then send it to the back and have it affect the piece in a more subtle way is extremely useful for me. And so back in the right click menu, assign material is also really useful to change the material of your selected strokes. And so I use this especially with my fill materials. If I want to experiment with making a certain fill stroke more or less opaque or giving it different gradient options. And then the last quick favorite I have in edit mode is auto lock layers. This can be found in the layers drop down. Here it is, right click, add to quick favorites. And it even shows up in our quick favorites with a little checkbox. How cool is that? And so when it's active, all layers are locked except for the one you're currently working in. And so I do have it active most of the time so that I'm always working in the layer that I want to be working in. But sometimes it can be handy to turn it off if you want to select strokes from all of the layers and modify them at the same time. For example, to have your proportional editing modify the whole image. And then my sculpt mode quick favorites are the smooth tool at the top and the grab or push tool. So in my mind, they're interchangeable. So one of these two. And then I also quick favorited these two selection masks. And so I quick favorited the first one, similar to the selection mode in edit mode, shows your selected strokes as their individual vertices. And then I also added the second one to my quick favorites which shows the selected strokes as strokes as a whole. And so this first selection mask can be very helpful because in edit mode, I can select only parts of a stroke. And then in sculpt mode, 
with this selection mask active, I will be only modifying those parts of the stroke. This is your halfway video reminder to stretch and get some water. Take care of yourself. All right, so we are moving on to a completely new category now. And so there are some settings that you can't easily give a shortcut to or add to your quick favorites. For example, Blender has composition guides, but in order to turn them on, I need to go out of my grease pencil object into object mode, select my camera, and then in the object data properties for my camera, I can open up viewport display and then composition guides. And then if I go back into camera view mode, either with numpad zero or this icon, there are some really useful ones to have. As far as I know, there's no easy way to toggle them on or off, and anything that forces me out of my grease pencil object is already too complicated. So with settings like this, something I can do is keyframe them. As someone who does not use Blender or grease pencil to animate, all of my art typically just exists on one frame, and so this is a clever way that I can use the Blender timeline. And so I'm just zooming in with the scroll wheel and with middle mouse button, moving it. And also for this step, you just want to make sure that this icon, auto keying, is turned off. Basically what happens when auto keying is on, if you move forward in your timeline and you draw, it will create a new blank keyframe. Perfect for animation, don't want it personally. So when it's not active, I can go forward in my timeline and I'll still be drawing on the most recent grease pencil keyframe. And so now, what we can do to set up some composition guides. At frame one, let's say I want thirds, I will press this dot to keyframe it at off. It's not visible right now. I can move forward one frame in the timeline to frame two with the right arrow key and then I will turn on the thirds guideline. And now it's a diamond that I can press to keyframe it. And then in order to see these keyframes, I do need to be in the dope sheet timeline. And then at frame three, I can keyframe it back off. And like this, I can set up the composition guides that I want to use in advance, having them being active one frame apart. And so I've keyframed the thirds, the center, and the diagonal, and I can scroll through them just with the left and right arrow keys. And once this is set up, I can also do this from within my grease pencil object while I'm drawing. Another way that I sometimes use this is with my sketch layers. This is not exactly a sketch layer, but you get the idea. And so, for example, at frame one, I can keyframe the opacity at one, full opacity, and then if I go to frame six and lower the opacity to zero and keyframe that, then basically with the left and right arrow keys, I can modify the opacity of the sketch layer by 20% at a time in an instant. And so I can very easily have the sketch more or less visible while I'm doing the line art. And then another camera setting that I quite, I find it interesting, it is the passe partout which if I look through my camera, this is the opacity of the black screen space around your canvas. And so at one, it's just fully black around your canvas and at zero, it is just transparent. And so I mostly do like to draw with it quite dark. So let's say I keyframe that so I can really focus on what's within my canvas, but other times, like when I have a lot of sketches and I'm trying to organize them within my canvas and I'm moving them around, it can be really helpful to be able to spread them out outside of the canvas and see what I have to work with. And so similar to how we keyframe the opacity of the sketch layer, we can keyframe the passepartout and scroll through different options in our timeline. Next up, being able to easily flip your canvas and to see your scene in grayscale are both extremely handy tools. So I did make a whole long video about this because I wanted to explore different options for flipping your canvas when making 3D pieces and having a full-fledged 3D scene. But lately I've just been making 2D art and I don't change the camera view from the default 
which means that it's just looking at our scene straight down the Y axis. And so to flip your canvas, you can just press on the Y icon right here. This will take you out of camera view mode, but you will still be looking at your scene from the right perspective. And then in order to do this, sometimes it is just handy to hide your camera, which you can do by selecting it in object mode with the shortcut H. And then you can easily alternate between drawing with your canvas flipped and unflipped. And then I only start using a grayscale window when I'm painting. For example, when I'm in this part of the art making. And I really like the idea of having a grayscale window that updates as you work. And so what I do to achieve that in the compositing workspace, I already have this node set up prepped. This allows me with this node here to add a paper texture or any kind of background image. And so I press shift A and search for BW and add an RGB to BW node and place it just before my final composite node. And then I'll go back to my 2D animation window. What I like to do to have a grayscale window is I go into edit, preferences, and then in interface, open the dropdown for temporary editors and render in image editor. So now if I press F12, it changed the 3D viewport to the image editor. So not exactly what I want. I can hold shift and drag on a corner of the image editor window to have it pop out. And then I will resize it and turn this one back to my 3D viewport. And then what I like to do, I'll quickly go into output properties. And while I'm working, I like to change the resolution percentage to something like 25% so that it's about this size. I find it handy both for saving space, but also just in general to keep this grayscale window quite small. And it just helps you keep an eye on how the piece is looking as a whole rather than getting too lost in the details, which I know I definitely struggle with. And so now as I'm working on my painting, I can just press F12 and it will very quickly update this grayscale version of my piece. So not a totally live updating grayscale window, but still pretty close. And if you do have a second screen, you could plop it onto there if you felt like it. But I usually have it floating somewhere around here. And then a feature that I find looks so handy in programs like Photoshop is the undo history. And so Blender has its own version of this. If you go into edit, here it is. Ooh. And then I did change it, right click, and I assigned it to the shortcut Three. The only conflict that I would want to keep an eye out for, I'll go back into the key map. And for this, I'll use key binding so that I can search by the shortcut itself. So type in three. We have our undo history at the top that we modified. And then I just want to remove the shortcut three in object mode, as well as in this grease pencil mode. So that shortcut was basically for this select mode, select all stroke be points between other strokes, but it's basically selecting strokes where they intersect other strokes. I don't use it much. Would much rather have. Ah. So now let's say I'm in sculpt mode, uh, making a lot of subtle tweaks to my piece. I've started to forget what the original version looked like. And so I can bring up the undo history. And if I go back to before I started stroke sculpting, I can very easily compare the two. I can also do this in edit mode as I modify strokes. And although it will count uh, when you select different strokes, it will count that as an undo state. It's still not too difficult to get a sense of how far you need to go back to undo all the different actions that you did. And what's also really cool though, is that using our shortcut D to turn off overlays does not count as an undo state. And of course, it also works in draw mode with adding new strokes to your scene. And you can see if you really want to keep them or not. And then in edit, preferences, system, is where you can modify the number of undo steps. You can go crazy up to 256. 
But just a little warning about undo history. With how Blender works, if you bring it up, go back a few steps, and then click on something else, almost anything else, it will most likely erase your history from that point onward. I've had this happen only once to me since I added this shortcut, and so I still think it's worth having. I still use it, I still like it, but just do be careful with it, especially if you have a high number of undo steps. At this point, I'm sitting at around 24 undo steps, and that is plenty. So some random, some last, extra little things that I changed in my startup file. So in the overlays, I turned off onion skinning for grease pencil. And then I also have stats turned on by default. So grease pencil can get very heavy very quickly. And so I just like to keep an eye on my stroke and my vertex count. And another thing that I've actually started doing into the modifiers is to have a simplify modifier. And then I changed the mode to adaptive and the factor, I made it 0.02. So you can see the difference that made in the point count. It's been really helping with computer lag and very heavy files. And then the only thing is you absolutely want to turn off edit mode display. So this means that when you go into edit mode, you'll see the strokes not with the simplify modifier applied to them. And this is necessary just because with the modifier visible in edit mode, if you try to select certain strokes, it, it's not happy. It, it's not having it at all. And we can see if I turn it back off in edit mode, it, it's just completely wild which vertices you actually have selected. So another thing when I'm in edit mode, I always use the lasso select tool, uh, so you can change it back to the default mode up here, which is just you drag and it selects either vertices or strokes as a whole. But what I've been doing, because with these fills, like you try to select a small area, but there is so much overlapping shapes and so much going on that you select so much of your piece. And so how I actually have it set is subtract existing selection. I use shift select to select that area. It selects way too much. And then with just dragging around the areas around the eye, I can deselect those strokes. And so that is how I've been doing to select precise areas with the lasso tool. Another thing you might like if, like me, you don't use Grease Pencil to animate, back in Preferences, in Key Map, you can change what the spacebar does. And so if we make it Tools, then spacebar brings up the different tools in the different modes, which is pretty cool. Something else I've just added, since I've been making only 2D art for a while now, I kept accidentally rotating my scene and having to go back into camera view mode. So admittedly, not a huge bother, but if I can avoid it, I want to. And so what I've done in our key map, I used key binding to look up middle mouse. And then in 3D view, I actually removed the rotate view option altogether. If you don't want to go to that extreme, you maybe still want to keep it, but not have it be so easy to accidentally click. I suggest getting rid of dolly view. Never heard of it. And making rotate view, shift control, middle click. The last must have while I draw is references. I always use references while I work. And I do not use Blender to display those references. But that's not any kind of criticism towards Blender. Uh, back when I used other painting programs, I also would not use them to display the reference images. I just never find it goes well. And also, why would I, when such a glorious free software exists, such as Pure Ref? Okay, so this is about to sound extremely sponsored. It's not. I just am so impressed with this software and it's free. So I do just want to give it a shout out. I have been using it for years. I have so many boards for all kinds of different illustration projects. It's just such a great way to dump all my ideas and references into. And you can pan around your scene with middle click, 
and you can move the window around your computer with right click. You can press on an image, rotate it. You can hold C and drag over it to crop it. And since I talked about flipping my canvas a lot, I would also like to be able to flip my references. And so I can very easily do that in Pure Ref by dragging over all of my references that I'm using for a piece and then hold shift alt and then drag left and right up and down. And so I have two screens. So I usually display my references on my second screen, but what's especially incredible about Pure Ref is that it will display on top of other windows, even when you work in them. Meaning that if I dedicate a little corner of my screen to a reference, or a couple references, it will stay there even as I work in Blender. And if ever this setting isn't on by default, you can turn it on by right clicking and then in mode, select always on top. With Alt 3, you can even make the Pure F background transparent. Look at that. And then Alt 4 to go back to the usual dark mode I use. We did it. We made it. We did it. So I hope that this has been helpful. It has been helpful for me to really make an effort to make all of the shortcuts as accessible as possible. So I'm very happy that I made this video and I hope it helped someone out there as well. So yes, if you have questions, like I mentioned about transitioning into this vector-based drawing program, um, let me know. So I will see you very soon. I hope you are doing well. Take care. Bye-bye.